So I use Logic Pro and I use Ableton half and half, 50%, 50%. I love both DAWs. But one of the things that blows me away with Ableton Live 11 are the new MIDI features. And I just, I think Ableton's MIDI workflow is so good that I'd like to just share a video showing my appreciation for it. So this is going to be kind of half tutorial and half showing how impressed I am. So we have a MIDI region over here, a MIDI, MIDI instrument, right? And I'm going to play, I'm going to play some keys, but the point is about the MIDI workflow. So one of the reasons why I like Ableton Live's, Live 11's new MIDI workflow is because of the scale feature. I tend to play the same thing over and over again. I might play the same in the same style in a different key. So whether I'm in C minor, uh, G minor, D major, harmonic, whatever it is, I tend to do the same thing and I get kind of bored. What makes it even worse is if I have brain fatigue, well, I'm just going to turn off my DAW. So what I like to do now is turn on the scale feature over here and it highlights, it highlights the notes, right? So it says we're in C major and if I change it to harmonic minor, it's going to switch. I'm sure there are a lot of tutorials that already cover this. Um, let's choose F sharp harmonic minor. So we have the scale feature. We could draw things in. But that's, that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is use the scale lock feature. So I have a custom key command. It's shift S for me. But you could just click it. So what this does is it obviously locks it. And the reason why I really like this, other DAWs have the lock to the scale feature, but if I were to make a triad, so right now it says E sharp, we'll go to G sharp, we'll go to B, that's an E major chord. If I copy this and just move it down, it, it stays as a triad in key. So that's why I like the scale lock feature. So let's see what we can come up with. Right, let's get all the middle notes. Oops. Let's bring that up. <clears throat> wow, that was terrible. Let's turn that off. And let's press legato. There we go, let's press legato again. And let's bring this down. So now we have a chord progression going, and it, it was really easy. I barely had to think. Not that not thinking is a good thing, but right now I have brain fatigue because I'm very tired from work. So this is why I like this feature. It, it helps to keep me creative and explorative. So let's just draw in other notes. All right. And I like the key command. So I'm selecting one note and I'm pressing Command D to duplicate. Use the arrow key to move it around. What if I wanted a different grid? Well, if you, if you see the bottom right, it says 1 8th. If I press Command 1, it moves to a smaller increment. So now it's in 16th notes. The division is in 16th notes. If I press Command 2, it goes the opposite way. So now it's in 1 8th. If I press Command 2 again, it's in 1 4th. If I press Command 3, it turns the division into one eighth triplets. So it, it focuses on triplets. So if I press command three, which I already have, there's a little T letter. And if I press command two and one, the grid changes. So you have triplets. And if you don't want a grid, you press command four and it says off. So I'm going to stick to the grid. And I just want to compose really, really fast. Just a general idea. And this is why... <laughs> I'm so impressed with, with this Ableton workflow. Let's see what we can come up with.
Okay, great. So you can see also if I select one note and I press option down and up, it'll move, it'll select a different MIDI note, right? So if I move, if I press option up, it'll go to the MIDI note to the right or the top. Option down, it will go to the bottom or to the left based on the order. So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's make another, let's get another instrument going. And let's just choose, I mean, we're not trying to do anything crazy here, right? I'm just showing the workflow. So let's just choose electric, just get the preset, <clears throat> make another MIDI region. Now, if I click this and I press command and left click the top region and I double click them, sorry, there you go, it will show both MIDI regions and you'll see over at this bar, these two bars, the name will change from electric to analog lab. So if I press focus, now if I click electric, you'll see that the analog lab MIDI is muted. And that's because I've selected both regions. So this is called multi multi MIDI editing or something like that. So now I can press B, press command two to go into eighth notes and just start drawing and tracing if I wanted. So this video is brought to you guys by Skillshare. And you guys already know what Skillshare is. It's an online learning platform. They've got a diverse set of subjects you can look into. So for example, I'm recording this message right now on my iPhone because I don't have a DSLR camera. And one of the classes I'm looking into right now, it's by a group called Moment. And I actually watch their YouTube channel quite a lot. So the class is called iPhone Filmmaking create cinematic video with your phone. One of the reasons why I really like Skillshare is because I believe that the structure that they give you serves as a kind of map for your creative journey to expand, to expand your horizon in very enjoyable ways. So if you're new to music production, there's a lot of classes you can look into, whether it's specifically for Ableton and Logic, or if it's just to learn an instrument, if I were to start all over again, this is this is definitely something I'd look into as a person that wants to get into music production. And Skillshare has been kind enough to share with me a free trial for you guys. So the first thousands of uh, subscribers, you get a free trial for the premium membership. And these are curated classes. So just check it out and see where your creative journey takes you. Let's get back to the video. Let's add another layer let's get this guy let's do the same thing i'm going to click this region press hold command and click another region and then i'll press shift tab to open up the midi view mode so now i can even just go to the analog lab instrument press command a copy everything go back to this new instrument move my play header to the beginning and press command V. And now I can just start muting the parts that I don't want, right? So all these notes over here. And maybe I can just put some of these notes. So let's see how that sounds. The workflow is just incredibly fast. So let's Get a hi-hat loop. Okay, I think I'm fanboying. <laughs> I feel embarrassed, but <laughs> I think I'm fanboying. When you drag a loop also, it's already automatically synced to the BPM. So let's get a snare now, and let's put this in MIDI. So I'm gonna create a MIDI region. I'm gonna turn off scale, and we're just gonna draw in the notes. I mean, that, that is really all we're doing, but there we go. So now if I go here, I'm going to add this other note. If I zoom in and I click, whoa, I click this little guy over here, it'll say chance. And if I drag this down, 
it'll only play maybe 53% of the time. Let's play that. See? That is incredible. That makes my life a lot easier. I think a better example is with like a perk. Okay, let's let's use this guy. This this MIDI workflow is insane. So actually, you know what? I'm gonna switch to the session view for this one. So right now I'm looping here and everything's playing. It's always gonna loop. Oops. And I'm gonna switch to the session view by pressing tab. And I'm gonna draw in some perk notes. All right, so these guys, I want the chance to be maybe 70%. And then this one will only come in 50, 51% of the time. So if I solo this, sometimes the notes aren't playing and sometimes they are. The next thing I can do is actually change the velocity range. I'll just increase this as a whole. <clears throat> and now the velocity plays at different, it's also randomized. And you can just randomize the velocity as well and the chance by clicking the randomize function here. So that's the MIDI workflow. I think it's incredibly simple and it's so handy. The last thing I want to do is add an 808. All right. So let's do the same thing. Let's click this guy and press command and click one of the more melodic regions so we can copy the bass notes. And here it is. Let's click focus again, go to the bottom, go to the 808, and let's just copy and paste the notes or just follow the notes. Okay, this is, this is not a, all right, this is what we have, but that was not the point. I'm, <laughs> the point is I wanted to show you guys this MIDI expression thing. And you can just click here, just drag it up. You gotta make sure that the scale mode's turned off though. So let's say we want to go here. And just leave it there. And then let's move this down an octave. If you want to move between the MIDI section and this MIDI expression, it's option one goes to the MIDI section, option three goes to the expression section. So there we go. I don't know how to explain how happy I am with this MIDI workflow. Everything just seemed so fluid. And I really, really like the, the whole probability thing going on, the scale feature, the velocity randomization. There's so much going on where I think the Ableton MIDI workflow is, is pretty high up there. That's my appreciation of, of Ableton Live, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you take care. Bye.